Hello everyone and welcome back to today's video. Today we're checking out a trunking radio for 5M. Um, this is going to be a paid script. I paid for this myself. This is not a sponsored video. I did not get anything for free here. Um, I'll go over the pricing details and everything in a couple minutes, but pretty much what an overview of this is, is it adds a trunking radio to your 5M server. If you don't know what trunking is, it is a realistic system that a lot of agencies are moving to if you um, are a digital system in your state or your city and it uses different types of talk groups so it doesn't use individual channels it uses control channels and voice channels it gets very complicated and if you're not in the radio world you're probably going to know nothing of what i just said and that is fine the only reason why i am doing this video is because i am a radio person i love radios they're really cool i have a bunch of them myself in real life and i wanted to kind of showcase this in 5m because someone made one of these and it's pretty cool so in terms of the pricing on this, it is a one, they, they change the prices a lot. So um, they ask you reach out to them if you're interested in it and it's kind of like customized. So if you are interested in it, you can go and I'll leave a link to their discord and you can chat with them. But overall it is a setup fee because it runs off their servers. So the way it works is when you key up, it will be sent to their server for processing and sent back instantly. So every new client costs them money. So they have a setup fee. And then there is a recurring cost monthly or yearly, um, dependent on that aspect. Uh, what you get from it is you get the actual resource itself in game. You get the web console where you can control different things. You can have tone outs for the fire department. You can play tones. You can um, speak, push to talk here on the web console for dispatchers and it would go in game. All of that stuff is provided as well. And then it gives you access to the software, which is a version of CPS. I'll go over what CPS is later. Um, but it is a cool setup. I actually really like CPS and I'm glad they kind of brought that in there. Um, and overall in game, you'll hear it without team speak, without discord. It uses the in game, um, stuff. So the second you drag it into your server, you press the button in game, set up your radio, and then you're going to be able to talk without any other applications. And you can just use the in game settings, um, for your radio for in game and for just default speaking in game as well, which is pretty cool. Um, so let's go over kind of how this works and how you install this and everything. So when you get the resource, um, they are going to give you a folder called radio and you just drag and drop. It's the same as every other resource that we've installed on this channel. You just drag and drop it into your server data resources folder and that's it. Um, very simple, very easy. And then they also give you a couple other things. They give you a voice announce folder so you can actually set up voice announcements on the channels. We'll go over what that is in a little bit. And then they also give you the option to have code plugs. So if you want a different um, kind of channel layout for each department, so you could do a channel layout for uh, law enforcement or for fire, they can all use different radios and different types. So fire would use like an XTS, uh, a a XTS what am I talking about? APX 8000 XE. And then PD would use something that's just a typical 8000. So they're different radios. One has bigger handles. One has the yellow casing, which is designed for the fire department. And one is just fully black, which is designed for the police department. When you're in vehicles, it's the kind of same way. You got a mobile dispatch there, helicopter, same way as that. Um, it, it's pretty cool overall. And the web interface is one of the cool aspects of this because you can obviously talk from here into the game and I'll showcase what that sounds like. You have hold tones. So if you've ever um, had a priority, a pursuit or something, you can have hold tones. Um, you can have emergency buttons in game that will be sent to the console here. You can select different tones and send them out over the radio for like priority messages. You can customize all this, of course, just like that. So you can send out all those aspects, um, in game through here. You can have as many channels as you want. I'll go over how you customize the channels as well in a little bit. Um, but overall it's a pretty cool resource and I'm going to compare some of this into what you have in real life. So in order to actually program your radio in game you have to open a code plug. So let's say I'm going to open our default um, LEO code plug. What this means is you get to select what type of radio you have. They have a lot of options here. I would go for the APX 8000. It's a great radio. They're the most common all band radios. Um, if you want a different radio for your boat or for when you're in the air, or if you're in a vehicle, you can configure all that to your liking as well. There's plenty of options. You can even have one of the APX Nexus, which is um, like a smartphone version of a radio. Um, you can set up your, uh, buttons for your radio. You can have GPS scan volume up, volume down, all that good stuff. You can have scan lists. So what this means is when you enable scan mode, it's going to scan these four frequencies. So the dispatch TAC, TAC three, TAC two and cart car, and then it will just, um, scan all those and you can listen to every channel at once, whatever comes in. And then you can also set up zones if you want. So you're in your law main zone. 
you have a bunch of different channels you can set it if you want it to be um rx only means receive only you can set up um secure so you can see dispatch it's called dispatch it's a trunked frequency it has encryption it has a voice announcement called law dispatch and it's talk group id it's 11 it has the ability to have emergency enabled emergency hot mic means when you click the emergency button it will go ahead and um, automatically push to talk for you you can have emergency revert where it will revert to a, a special emergency channel that's how it works in real life so you have a lot of options here it's a very in-depth type of setup that you don't typically get in 5m um it's just pretty cool to see in all honesty so you can set this up to your liking uh, your code plugs obviously if you load something like the fire department you're going to have the xe version you're going to have different channels so you can see um, this is the fire channel so they have different tax channels um, they have also the interop channels and all of that can also be here um, so you can do that help desk all of that's available in here so you can set this up to your liking um, pretty much it's just whatever you want to do as in the real life you have every channel id you have a billion different settings so their version, which is really cut down of this, is a lot easier. So why don't we go ahead and hop in game, and then I'll show you how you can change around the channels, add channels, and all that good stuff. So while my server loads up in the background, just a little idea on how you set this up. So the first time you go in game, you're going to select, uh, select backslash um, on your keyboard. It will pop up, um, and you'll see that this message that says permission request uh, wants to access, capture your microphone. You would press F8, click allow, you're good to go. It's pretty simple very easy there's no end user setup really um so it's literally that one thing click allow and you're good to go it goes over tutorials on how you can use the radio power it on the emergency button what zones you're in what buttons do at the bottom what this does which is actually channeling uh, changing the channel all that good stuff can be configured as well same with the portable one if you don't know what to do we'll go over this um pretty soon it will tell you how it shows how you receive calls so it becomes a little green thing with arrows going down which is receiving and it will show the talk group id of the person who's receiving and it will tell you how to um send a radio call there will be a tone if the channel's busy you won't be able to talk over each other all that good stuff um it goes over scan troubleshooting all of that and these are the key bindings f3 is your default talk f6 is emergency button um the backslash is the um, show radio and then if you do left bracket it will go ahead and toggle the radio so you can actually interact with it which is pretty cool very simple very easy to have set up um, in your console mine's taking a while to start up but you'll see at the start of the server as long as everything started up successfully you're good to go here we go we can take a look at it now so you'll see in here that it says um, the resource has connected successfully and um it doesn't have any problems so it's just taking a second because i have so many resources on our recording server right there so i'll just scroll up a little bit come on thing let's not let's not do this today uh it is right here so you can say uh, update check okay your version started looking for config started resource you're good to go so you don't have to worry about anything else there it's pretty drag and drop simple once you have that up and I'll go ahead and connect to the server. And while we do that, we'll take a look at the unified system manager. This is where you can actually add channels, remove them. So you can see the talk group ID, talk, talk group, talk group ID is 11, your name of the channel, your encryption key, what channel group it's in. So this is a zone. All of that stuff can be here. You can create and remove channels. You have group management. So what's under law, interop, other, and you have your tone sets. So you can go ahead and add new tones, play the tones, delete the tones, whatever you want to do here. You can do that as well along with user management if you wish to add more users to this admin side you can do that and you'll also have a system log i'll show you how this works in a second um, but if we go ahead and turn this on and key up and start talking and we go back to the system log you see that we had a radio id of 2002 um went ahead and affiliated with channel 11 it then um used um radio id 202 which is our dispatch one over there to send a call on that channel with voice channel id 850.550 you don't really have to worry about what these numbers are this is just kind of how the system works that's how trunked systems work um for example if i pull up la risk which is a um the regional interoperable communication system in los angeles this is kind of how it works you have some control channels and a lot of voice channels so the main um power that you use in la would be the downtown simulcast so from here, you have two control channels and a number of voice channels. 
So every time someone keys up, this control channel will grab one of the open voice channels and you'll let um, be able to talk on the talk group you're affiliated with. Um, and you can see here, rather than using conventional um, kind of frequencies, they use decimal and hexadecimal um, talk group IDs. So it's just a kind of a newer system. There's a lot of cool things that can happen in um, real life with this system. So you can have over the air programming, you can do encryption key, re, re keys automatically. I work in a lot of the nonprofit world around all that. So I get to mess with it quite a lot, which is pretty fun. Radios are really cool. Uh, but anyway, we are in game here. So you can see if we go ahead and press the backslash button, it will say no radio profile found. Are you clocked in? All I got to do is slash set radio agency. And then the uh, the radio agency, we're LEO. If we go ahead and open up our radio on the bottom right, you can see it's going to load in. And Leo dispatch. Leo dispatch. Main. And it will see permission request. This resource is, is asking permission to access media. Press F8. Go down to the bottom right and click allow. It's that simple. That, then you're, you're ready to go. You can press F3. You'll be able to talk. You're ready to go. So that's all the end user has to do. As a server owner, you ought to do a lot more. But as the end user, you can literally just get in game, press allow. You're good to go. And if I hold down F3, you can see I'm now talking. This, uh, if I hold down F3, you can see I'm now talking. The uh, screen down down turns into red. And you can actually hear it um, from my web interface that I have toggled on in the background. So that's kind of what it sounds like. Now, in realistic terms, um, these will take a bit to, it, it's typically one second or so to hear. So if I queue up here and I start talking queue and I let go, I you see it comes back to the web interface just a couple seconds later. The reason that happens is because of the processing time. In real life, there is also a delay. Um, so I've seen it in person. I've been with them on scenes where there is delays trust me it is a realistic thing that happens so it's not that uh you could probably get rid of the delay if you tried to have faster processing in the background for the people who make this but it, it, in the end it's pretty realistic um and then obviously if i toggle this off i'm not going to be able to interact with this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to mute this and then i'm going to send a tone in game and in game you can see i hear it the top of the radio comes in with a little yellow thing that's saying it's receiving you can obviously send a tone in game too so there is a tone for priorities and you can still talk during that priority time, but that tone's going to repeat every 10 seconds while there's a priority until it's cleared. So I'll go ahead and clear that as well. Um, so it's, it's pretty cool, pretty simple to see, very easy to jump in game. Um, and then if you press the left bracket, you can see I can interact in the top right. There's a radio settings for this. I'll just make it really big real quick and drag it to the center so you can kind of see what's going on here. Uh, save settings like that. And then you can interact with this. So you can turn your volume up. So I can turn volume to 100 here. I can um, select my scan list. So scan list one and press scan. It's now going to have a Z icon. That means it's scanning and I'll be able to listen over all the things. You can turn it off as well. You can sort, uh, sort the channels just from the top. So TAC2, TAC3, TAC4, car to car, law, admin, and this Leo dispatch. There's the channel announcement. You can click that little um, button over here. It's actually like a little ABC button that will switch your zone. So interop one, help desk, back Leo to law dispatch. Main. And then obviously you can turn it off or whatever else is needed um, as well. So it's pretty cool. I'm just going to move this back to where I had it, make it a little bit smaller because I don't really need to interact with it that much while I'm in game. So I'm just going to put it down there and save that setting. So it's pretty cool. You can obviously press F3 at any point, talk, even if you're running, anything like that. If you have a weapon out, same thing, press F3. It will go ahead and do that. Obviously your weapon's gonna move, so don't be doing this um, all, all points. If you go ahead and spawn a vehicle, we'll spawn a police car in here. Here we go, don't get killed. We'll just spawn a default police cruiser. If you toggle the radio on, you can see it is now a mobile radio. So you got a larger screen, same button to interact with it. You can set scan, select, volume up, volume down, all that. Volume um, is all here, so you can switch the channels as well. Dispatch. Leo dispatch. Then you have volume up, volume down if you need it there. And then to send the emergency alert, and what this is going to look like is, I'll turn this on over here as well. If you click that button, it's going to say, um, it's going to send out that tone board. And then over here, you can see law dispatch. It will show you the unit ID, and it's going to start blinking. Um, it also shows here emergency from 7201 on channel 11. 
Um, so this is law dispatch uh, 11. You can see that it has an emergency signal going off here. Um, and then obviously you can still key up and talk as an emergency unit. Um, so it will say emergency. I can talk here. It shows that I'm keying up as an emergency unit. Um, and it tells you status, what unit it is. So 7201 is the emergency tone and you can obviously clear it and that will clear the emergency down here in game as well. So, it's so one thing I forgot to do in the video when I was recording it is show you what it looks like in real life. So this is an APX 7000, a little older than the one I was showcasing in the video, but it's the same type of setup. You have zones, you have battery, you have um, your calls, you have info on the radio. All this stuff is the same. So you can switch between zones. So in here, this is my receive for my nonprofit work I do. So we listen to LAPD, we listen to LAFD, LA Sheriff's Department, all of that is in here. So pretty much it's the same type of thing. You turn the knob just like you do in game to switch the channel you're on. You got volume, you have different things. You have the push to talk button. Obviously it's receive only, so you won't hear it. This is the same tone you would hear in game if it's incorrect. And then we even have talk group names. So if I turn this up and then change it, it will say the channel name. So you have the same type of channel announcements you would in real life um, on that radio in game. So it's a cool radio. I'm glad they brought it to 5M. Hopefully you can enjoy it and see some fun. So with it's it. a pretty cool system, pretty advanced. The um, I, I've enjoyed messing with it. Um, I think it's a little too advanced for some people, but if you want to have your server where you have a cool system without that much user interaction and it's pretty much just end user based where the end user just hops on and key up without having to use team speak or anything else it can come in a lot of handy so it's a cool system i do recommend checking it out 